Immigration tintin, met mélancolette moins, li dou pas citizen. Li di ouais, ouis moi di le what, li dim vote kagen kat. This video contains information for folks who entered the United States without a visa or other entry document and who were apprehended by the immigration police, which is known as ICE. The information is current as of January 2023. The U.S. immigration system is an intimidating and racist system. It was designed to be this way and can sometimes feel discouraging. We hope that this video helps you defend yourself in your immigration case in the United States, avoid immigration scams, and learn more about advocacy efforts to transform the system. The information provided in this video does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information is for general informational purposes only. Anyone watching this video should contact a reputable immigration attorney to get advice on their particular case. What will happen when you are released from detention? What should you do next? Once someone is released from ICE custody, it is important to understand whether they have ICE reporting requirements, immigration court hearing dates, or both. This varies from person to person. How to handle ICE check-ins. If you have been released from ICE custody, you may still have reporting requirements with the nearest ICE office. These requirements may involve one or more of the following attending in-person check-ins, having weekly phone calls with an ICE officer, uploading weekly photos to an app on your phone, the use of ankle monitors, and or home visits. In-person check-ins are at the ICE office nearest to the address that ICE has on file for you. The frequency of these check-ins varies case by case. They may be required every month, every six months, or every year. Make sure not to miss your check-in appointments as missing these appointments can affect your immigration case and escalate the enforcement tactics used by ICE. If you have an emergency, contact the ICE office to let them know. Contact info can be found here at the link on the screen, ice.gov slash contact slash field dash offices. Some people are required by ICE to wear a GPS ankle monitor. These ankle monitors can be physically painful. They are stigmatizing and another form of incarceration. If your monitor is defective, for example, if it overheats or the battery discharges very quickly, you should contact the ICE office to let them know. You can also ask ICE to remove the monitor. Ultimately, it is up to ICE officers whether or not they will remove it. These are currently the realities of ICE surveillance, but many immigration advocates and organizing groups have been calling for the end of this racist and inhumane practice. You will be required to keep your address and contact information updated with ICE and not to leave the state without ICE's permission. If you don't keep your address up to date with ICE, it is possible you will miss a notice from them about a future check-in or court hearing date. Whether you have in-person check-in requirements, ankle monitors, home visits, or a surveillance app on your phone, you can make a request to the ICE office to change the terms of these requirements. Ultimately, ICE gets to decide whether to make any of these changes. Court hearings. In addition to ICE reporting requirements, you may have a date to appear in immigration court for your removal proceeding. Please remember that an appointment with ICE and a hearing at immigration court are two separate things. If you are scheduled to check in with ICE and to see an immigration judge, you must attend both appointments. Missing a court appearance can result in a judge issuing a removal order against you. The notice to appear is the official document that starts a removal case against you in immigration court. If you haven't already received a notice to appear, ICE may send you one by mail in the future. If you have already received a notice to appear, you may get subsequent hearing notices in the mail. These hearing notices may notify you of a change in the date, time, or location of your hearing. Make sure to keep your address updated with ICE and the immigration court so you don't miss any hearing notices. If you miss a court date because your address was not up to date with ICE and the immigration court, again, a removal order may be issued against you. You can also check to see whether you have an upcoming court hearing by calling the immigration court hotline at 800-898-7180 or by visiting their website at acis.eoir.justice.gov and entering your A number. 
Your A number is a nine-digit number preceded by the letter A, which you can find on your immigration paperwork. We recommend checking the court hotline regularly as the best way to stay up to date on the dates and locations of your upcoming court appearances. Immigration court. What happens in immigration court and what are some options for immigration relief? Immigration court is a chance to prove to the judge that you are eligible for a type of immigration relief and should not be removed from the United States. There are two types of hearings in non-detained immigration court. The first type is a master calendar hearing, which is a preliminary appearance before a judge. These hearings are usually short and you may have more than one. During one of these hearings, the judge will ask you to admit or deny the facts in your case that appear on the notice to appear, including your country of citizenship, date, and manner of entry to the U.S. It is strongly recommended that you talk to an attorney before admitting or denying these facts. During your master calendar hearing, you may request a continuance from the judge if you need more time to find an attorney. During this hearing, you will also tell the judge what kind of relief you are requesting. Qualifying for a form of immigration relief means that you would be eligible to be excused from removal. The second type of hearing is an individual hearing. During an individual hearing, you will testify before the judge and present evidence of why you are eligible for the relief you are seeking. There are limited forms of relief from removal available, and whether you are eligible for a form of relief depends on the circumstances of each individual case. It is critical to get a full screening from a reputable lawyer to see if you are eligible for a particular form of relief. We will discuss ways to find one later in the video. Types of relief. One type of relief is family-based adjustment of status. This is where you may be able to apply for legal status in the United States through an immediate relative, in most cases, a U.S. citizen spouse, a child over the age of 21, or a parent if you yourself are under the age of 21. Generally, you must have entered the United States lawfully through a port of entry or have received parole at the border to qualify for this form of relief. But there are some exceptions to this. Again, talk to a reputable lawyer to see if this option is available to you. Another type of relief is asylum. A person may be eligible for asylum when they have suffered past persecution or have a well-founded fear of future persecution in their home country. That persecution must be based on one of the following. Your race, religion, nationality, country of origin, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. Being part of a social group could be the fact that you are LGBTQ, a woman, a member of a community organization, student group, to name a few examples. It is a broad category in which association with a particular social group could lead to being targeted. If you are eligible to apply for asylum, you must submit your application for asylum within a year of arrival to the United States even if your first court appearance is after that date. If you want to apply for asylum and an immigration court case has not been opened against you, you still must apply within a year of arriving in the U.S., but you should submit your application to USCIS rather than immigration court. Talk to a reputable lawyer to find out more about your eligibility for asylum and where you should submit your application if you decide to apply. If you have been convicted of certain crimes, received permanent status in another country, or missed the one-year filing deadline, a judge may find you ineligible for asylum. In that case, you may still qualify for another status called withholding of removal or relief under the Convention Against Torture. These statuses are similar to asylum and are harder to obtain and come with fewer benefits than asylum. Other forms of relief include Temporary Protective Status, or TPS, which is available to Haitian citizens, including children of native-born Haitian citizens, who entered the U.S. by November 6, 2022, and have resided here since then. Beware of filing your application too soon before the government allows it. Wait until the Federal Register comes out 
and connect with a reputable immigration lawyer or service. U visas are available for victims of certain types of crimes here in the U.S., such as certain harms in the workplace, physical assault, rape or intimate partner violence, and many other qualifying crimes. T visas are available for victims of human trafficking. If a crime has been committed against you, it is important to report the crime or harm that has taken place with the help of an advocate in order to obtain documentation, which will be required for your immigration case. Special Immigrant Juvenile Status is a status for youth under 21 who have been abandoned, abused, or neglected by at least one of their parents, for whom it is not in their best interest to return to their home countries. This is not an exhaustive list. There are several other forms of immigration relief that you may be eligible for, depending on your individual circumstances. To find out if you're eligible, talk to a reputable immigration attorney. Immigration fraud. Be careful of immigration scams. Make sure to talk with a reputable immigration attorney who will give you an honest assessment of your options for relief. Some unauthorized immigration practitioners, including tax preparers, notary publics, ministers, local community businesses such as multi-service centers, and even some lawyers may be eager to engage you as a client but may not follow the correct procedures and some may overcharge you. Finding a reputable attorney. Generally, there are two types of people who are authorized to practice immigration law. Licensed immigration attorneys and legal representatives approved by the U.S. Department of Justice, called DOJ accredited representatives. Avoid people who are called immigration consultants or tax advisors. There are many online services that will claim to develop an asylum application for you and will charge fees. You can verify if an attorney is licensed by asking to see their state bar documents or checking online with the state bar. You can verify if a non-attorney is legally authorized to provide immigration services, this is called being an accredited representative, by going to the Department of Justice website and searching for the accredited representative roster. There are several online resources to find free or low-cost legal services organizations in your area. Legal services organizations often receive funding from foundations and city governments and specialize in immigration. Using the legal directory of the Immigrant Advocacy Network at www.immigrationadvocates.org, you will be able to locate providers near you. Another resource is Law Help at lawhelp.org. You will be able to select the state where you reside and search specifically for immigration assistance. Many legal services organizations have had reduced capacity or wait lists due to COVID. It is important to call and leave a voicemail with your contact information clearly stated. If you are looking for a private immigration attorney, the bar associations in your county, city, or state may have legal referral programs to find an attorney. When working with an immigration practitioner, it is important to sign a contract outlining the responsibilities and scope of work, obtain receipts for any payments made, be informed about what relief you are applying for and the information contained in the application, and obtain copies of all documents submitted in your name for your records. Stay connected and get involved. The harsh realities of the U.S. immigration system can be very isolating, but there's so much power in staying connected to each other and local organizing groups that are mobilizing people around immigrants' rights. It is through organizing that practices and systems change. Having a strong community around you may also help in your removal proceedings. Haitian Women for Haitian Refugees has been fighting alongside many organizations to demand the end of mass deportations 
and the redesignation of TPS. There are many examples of advocacy efforts that we have won recently, and there is so much more that can change in our future if we organize together. Mes amis, mes amis, dis-moi, pendant l'occupation, l'homme ou l'autre tout y est péral. Est-ce que américain t'es gagné à l'ien 4? Est-ce que américain t'es gagné à l'ien 4?